emitting type of uh, electricity generation. Can I turn to the question of cost? If there's a genuine free market in energy production, we wouldn't build any nuclear power stations. And we certainly wouldn't be building any renewables. We would be burning fossil fuels because fossil fuels are by far the cheapest way of producing electricity. Now, uh, in fact, and, and just to, to, to vouch for that, Professor David Simpson, who did a paper uh, a couple of years ago for the David Hume Institute in Edinburgh, said that over his lifetime, and including the cost of decommissioning, nuclear power was two and a half times cheaper than renewables. Renewables are the most expensive form of producing uh, electricity. But of course, we don't just say this is about how much it costs, because we realize that the cost of fossil fuels are more than just money. It's all about the carbon emissions as well, it's all about the question of security of supply, and it's a question about using a diminishing asset. And therefore, it isn't just about cost, and that's why I think, at least in the uh, short and medium term, the uh, importance of having uh, nuclear power outweighs uh, the cost, even though it's more expensive than fossil fuels. And on this question of uranium running out, well, you know, innovators studied uh, anything about economics and minerals knows that you know, we have been told about virtually every mineral in the world at some point in the last 200 years that we are running out. And of course, we always fund more. And of course, if, you, if, if uranium does in fact run short, we can develop fast breeder reactors that extract 60 times the energy that convention, conventional reactors do. And finally, I want to turn to the question of safety. I think this is the real bogeyman of nuclear power, probably driven by its images of Homer Simpson sitting at the uh, safety control panel in Springfield Power Station. Everybody, I think, now accepts that what happened at Chernobyl could not happen in a civilized Western democracy like, like our own. That design could never have been licensed in this particular country. In fact, in the UK, there is an excellent safety record uh, for the nuclear uh, industry. In fact, it's a far better safety record than coal, gas, or oil, all of which have a, a very long history of serious and fatal accidents throughout uh, their lives. And the nuclear industry is, of course, very heavily regulated and takes health and safety extremely seriously. And in fact, don't take my word for that. If you were to go to the communities around Torres Power Station and Hunterston Power Station and ask people there if they were happy living with the nuclear power station, in most cases the answer would be uh, a positive one because that's they, they see the value of having those uh, jobs and that economic contribution in their particular communities. As for the question of a terrorist attack, well, you know, of course, such as the engineering of these nuclear power stations, that they are built uh, with health and safety very much uh, at the forefront, built to withstand any potential uh, terrorist attack. And as we already know to our cost, both in this country and elsewhere, there are easier targets for terrorist uh, attack. Um, the question of waste is a very important one. Um, what we are seeing now is modern nuclear technology is producing much less waste than was the case previously. And of course, uh, the Committee <coughs> on Radioactive Waste Management has proposed a number of solutions uh, for dealing with waste, including deep uh, level storage, uh, which uh, doesn't seem to be an unreasonable way of dealing with this particular problem. Well, let me just touch on this question of nuclear fusion. You know, I don't know whether nuclear fusion is a, is a realistic uh, objective. I think it's been said it could take 50 years to develop. But if we really are talking about the possibility of creating a, a method of uh, making electricity that is low cost and produces no waste at all, I think it would be foolish to abandon that search at the present time. And if we stop all the investment in uh, nuclear energy at the moment, then we will simply won't see any further research being done into nuclear fusion. So let me say, uh, Mr. Chairman, in, just in conclusion, you know, I accept that there are pluses and minuses for all energy technologies. Uh, you know, I would actually like to think at some future point we would get to a future of practical visage where we wouldn't need uh, nuclear power at all, where we could have renewables that provide a constant base load uh, that they don't currently. But that future is probably at least 30 to 40 years uh, away uh, at best. The figures I gave earlier were the Hunterston B is due to go offline in uh, 2015, Tornes due to go offline in 2023. We have an energy gap 
that we have to fill in the short, medium term. I don't think we can afford to fill that unless we're prepared to at least extend the lives of these uh, nuclear power stations. If you look at what's happening in other countries, in France, just across the water, 80% of their electricity generation comes from nuclear. In Finland, they've been developing a new build program uh, of nuclear power stations. It doesn't seem to be quite the bogeyman there that uh, some people in this country want us to have. Even someone of the standing of Professor James Lovelock, the guru of the Green Movement, has said that he believes the future, at least in the short to medium term, uh, is nuclear. And I was very interested in Patrick's final comment about a source of nuclear power generation that he welcomes. Well, I would hate to accuse Patrick of being a NIMBY. What he seems to be saying was nuclear power was fine as long as it wasn't anywhere near him uh -huh. and far enough away. No, I think um, if we are to avoid an energy gap, I think we have to keep the door open to nuclear. The alternative is to burn more fossil fuels and import more energy, and that cannot be in our national interest. simply 